Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So, uh, here we are, Shishi Gorani Thai, and a different angle, vision, and reading the Bhagavatam. Where are we at? We're Canto for Chapter 3, Text 1. So we're starting Chapter 3 today, which is called Talks Between Lord Shiva and Sati. That's his wife. Haribo! <laughs> So a new chapter key J. Oh Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Text one. Matra continued. In this manner the tension between the father-in-law and son-in-law, Daksha and Lord Shiva, continued for a considerably long period. Purport. The previous chapter has already explained that Vidura questioned the sage Maitreya as to the cause of the misunderstanding between Lord Shiva and Daksha. Another question is why the strife between Daksha and his son-in-law caused Sati to destroy her body. The chief reason for Sati's giving up her body was that her father, Daksha, began another sacrificial performance to which Lord Shiva was not invited at all. Mm. Generally, when every sacrifice is when any sacrifice is performed, although each and every sacrifice is intended to pacify the Supreme Personality of Godhead Vishnu, all the demigods, especially Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva, and the other principal demigods such as Indra and Chandra are invited and they take part. It is said that unless all the demigods are present, no sacrifice is complete. But in the tension between the father-in-law and son-in-law, Daksha began another Yagya performance to which Lord Shiva was not invited. Daksha was the chief progenitor employed by Lord Brahma and he was a son of Brahma. So he had a high position and was also very proud. But you see, Shiva... <coughs> He's also a son of Brahma. He was born from his forehead, the anger, Rudra, anger, if you remember that pastime. Mm -hmm. So they're brothers, really. And it's quite normal for brother siblings to have a tiff, really. Mm -hmm. Although this is on another level, but. <laughs> uh, to say the least. But, um, yeah, so in one sense, Prabhupada's done a bit of a spoiler alert because. I was going to say that. You know, why doing this, Prabhupada? So now, yeah, we know what's coming. Because this is a talk between Lord Shiva and Sati. So what you just read about in the Prabhupada... Well, he didn't do the alert. That's the point. He didn't give an alert. He didn't say spoiler alert. He did a spoiler. Do you understand? Yeah, no, that's... No, now you're embarrassed. Spoiler alert means the same thing. Now people are laughing. No. No, no, no I don't literally you, mean... Are you that. all laughing at me? Yeah, don't... No, don't, no, 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 a spoiler alert is... When you say, spoiler alert, I'm about to say something that will spoil it. Yeah, and so you just did. Now, don't worry about that. That's not what we got. Anyway, I'm mean, sorry about that. So, he's American. So it's <laughs> I'm that old and American. But, okay, anyway, yeah, so... But what Prabhupada, the point I was making is that what Prabhupada made in the purport, we're not going to read about it yet because this chapter isn't even about that. It comes in the next chapter, chapter 4. So Prabhupada's got, maybe by then we'll forget what he said, but but yeah, that's what's coming up. So, <laughs> so well, the point is <clears throat> Daksha hasn't really got over it. Which, so he went back and did another yagya. And a son-in-law and father-in-law are not getting on. So there you go. Even in the celestial beings, they can't sort themselves out. There you go. Well, I was just thinking how the last uh, purport, Srila Prabhupada spent so much time talking about how unnecessary demigod worship is. <clears throat> and this opening purport, Srila Prabhupada says that 
a yogi isn't considered complete if the demigods aren't invited. <laughs> <laughs> and now he does that all the time. So, <laughs> so then you kind of think, uh, well, and uh, okay. Anyway, text two. <clears throat> when Lord Brahma appointed Daksha the chief of all the Prajapatis, the progenitors of population, Daksha became very much puffed up. So this is a big problem, and Prabhupada mentions this at the end, that he is a son of Brahma. He had a, a son of Brahma, had a high position, and therefore was very proud. Purport. Although he was envious and was inimical towards Lord Shiva, Daksha was appointed the chief of all Prajapatis. That was the... That was the cause of his excessive pride. When a man becomes too proud of his material possessions, he can perform any disastrous act. And therefore, Daksha acted out of false prestige. That is described in this chapter. Yeah, so one who's puffed up, he'll accuse others. Um, he doesn't keep his civility and his humility. Um, one who, yeah, is puffed up and proud can basically perform as Prophet says any, any disastrous act. Mm. Thinking he's invincible. Mm. Okay. <clears throat> Chapter, f no, text three. Daksha began a sacrifice named Vajapiya and he became excessively confident of his support by Lord Brahma. He then performed another great sacrifice named Brihaspati Sada. In the Vedas, it is prescribed that before performing a Brihaspati Sada sacrifice, one should perform the sacrifice named Vajapaya. While performing these sacrifices, however, Daksha neglected great devotees like Lord Shiva. According to Vedic scriptures, the demigods are eligible to participate in yagyas and share the oblations. But Daksha wanted to avoid them all. All sacrifices are intended to pacify Lord Vishnu. But Lord Vishnu includes all his devotees. Brahma, Lord Shiva and the other demigods are all obedient servants of Lord Vishnu. Therefore, Lord Vishnu is never satisfied without them. But Daksha, being puffed up with his power, wanted to deprive Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva of participation in the sacrifice, understanding that if one satisfies Vishnu, it is not necessary to satisfy his followers. But that is not the process. Vishnu wants his followers to be satisfied first. Hmm. Lord Krishna says, Mad Bhakta Puja Biyadika. The worship of my devotee is better than worship of me. Similarly, in the Shiva Purana, it is stated that the best mode of worship is to offer oblations to Vishnu, but better than that is to worship the devotees of Krishna. Thus, Daksha's determination to neglect Lord Shiva in the sacrifices was not fitting. Hmm. So, Daksha's acting very um, immature and petty and um, going ahead with these sacrifices. And it's interesting when I'm reading it, I'm thinking, yeah, he's, but he hasn't obviously moved on. On, if he was performing the sacrifices for the sake of performing the sacrifices to please the, you know, forefathers, demigods, the Lord, then you just do it and do your duty. Mm -hmm. But he's pointedly not inviting a very prominent member, whether he's the son-in-law or not. That he's sure Shiva is Lord Shiva, and so it just suggests that. Um, like it, it's done 
deliberately for that reason as well the sacrifice to show I'm putting on this big sacrifice everyone look at me everyone come you know and as we saw great sages and demigods come but that's not the be all and end all it he's he wants to make a point and the point is that and I'm spiting you Shiva mm -hmm. by the fact that he's not invited you know because you could invite him just for the sake of well i need to invite him you know like it says vishnu brahma shiva at least those three mm. need to be present or pleased and you would maybe be grudging but like it's a quite a big person not to invite if you want the sacrifice to go ahead but he the greater than the sacrifice is the point he that he wants to make which is poo poo on you shiva that's the point poo -poo. does that make sense kind of it's very telling you know it's like when you invite friends around or have some program in the temple and it's very telling who you don't invite. yeah and and know that it will be seen that's the point you know mm. you know it will be seen and someone may say oh where's so and so they didn't come Oh, that one didn't get... Oh, you didn't invite them, you know. And that's uh, passive-aggressive almost, you know. Mm -hmm. So That's exactly what it is, passive-aggressive. Yeah, so that's... <clears throat> yeah, so he's... Yeah, he's a bit of a troublemaker. <laughs> <laughs> Another point uh, is that... Um, uh, this seems to really encourage demigod worship and... Although the principle makes sense, um, it's unusual that Srila Prabhupada would say like this without warning or bringing up the other point. And as we mentioned at the end, the last purport of the previous chapter, in fact, I used that purport in class the other morning um, because Prabhupada talks clearly that we do not need to worship the demigods, but we should be respectful to them. So it's interesting, and in the last sentence about Mad Bhakta Puja worship of my devotees is better than worship of me, based on the fact that the devote that the demigods are devotees, seems to be a very strong argument for why we should worship the demigods instead of worshiping Krishna. Does that make sense? So. If Krishna, if Vishnu says, my devotees are more important to me, you should worship them. Uh, worship of my devotees is more important than worship of me. And then devotees are equated to demigods. Then it means we should be worshiping the demigods. Does that make sense? So it's, it's very interesting. So let's see if and or how that pans out. But worshiping the demigods and worshiping the Vaishnavas doesn't mean I accept the demigods and the Vaishnavas as the absolute truth. Yeah. It means I'm respecting you enough to put you on a certain platform. No, I don't mind, but you're not God. Yeah, that's all right. But generally, what, what at least what I've understood that we're told, um, or what has been explained by our founder, Achari, is that we don't worship the demigods. Yeah, but worship, okay, what I'm saying is I equate that word with respect. I respect you. You know, he's asking. Okay, and that's that's all right in one sense. Like. So then what you're, but then that doesn't work when Prabhupada says we should respect the demigods, but we shouldn't worship them. And he uses those two words independently. So if you say worship equals respect, that's fine. I get that. But then in the same sentence, you use those two words diametrically opposing each other. Do you understand? Yeah, I understand. Let me give another example without clogging up the discussion. Clogging it up. Okay. <laughs> like when you perform weddings, because he performs weddings, by the way. I always perform weddings, by the way. And other yagyas. You do Ganesh Puja. And you, when you do the, um, like the fire and that, and you're chanting mantras other than Krishna and Vishnu, but so you're worshipping, but you're not worshipping. It's understood that you haven't become no, a no, 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 Ganesh I, Bhakta and a Shiva Bhakta and... Yes, 
Yes. And um But there is some respect and worship and they can take their share of the sacrifice. Uh, yeah. Um a couple of things there. And not meant to clog up the conversation. <laughs> but um a couple of things there. That um before uh, a wedding, generally we do Ganesh Puja or uh, Vishvakshain Puja. And we always explain that Vishvakshain is the uh, eternal form uh, of, and is the spiritual form of Ganesh. Ganesh is a material manifestation in this, in this world, the son of Lord Shiva, who is the elephant headed god like that demigod but vishwakshain is the commander of lord vishnu's army in the spiritual sky and actually that's who we perform the worship to but rupa goswami explains in the nectar of devotion that one can uh worship ganesh now of course devotees asked Prabhupada about that and i think they were in either fiji or Philippines, someplace like that. And um, Prabhupada said, yes, no problem. You can put Ganesha on the altar and worshiping, worship him, but you have to give uh, you have to give me or give the BBT 50% of everything or 75% of everything that comes in because generally it's being done with the wrong consciousness. So that's that's there. It means um, when we offer respect to Dorga Devi or to Lord Shiva or to Ganesh, then we should understand their po- we're offering respect in accordance with their position. But respect and worship are different. Now, of course, when we do Vishwakshain Puja or Ganesh Puja, that is a worship. So, it's, it, for me, it's different. It's still different from respect. And when we chant mantras such as the uh, Shanti Panchakam, where we chant other names, um, uh, Hari Om, Shamno Mitra, Sham Varunaha, Shamno, you know, you, you chant uh, Vayu, Indra, different mm-hmm. names like that. So that's all right. We're, off, we're, we're calling out to the different Davidses. They can be present in, in a form of respect. So... The point being that it, it can be a little complicated here. If you're reading this and you don't have um, a full understanding, or even I feel like I have somewhat of a full understanding, and, and it seems like it could be considered contradictory. Although the point remains that it's very clear that we water the root of the tree, which is Krishna, and then the branches, which are the demigods, automatically get served. So like that. We don't need to worship them independently. And it may not necessarily mean that we can't worship them independently, understanding their context and connection to Krishna. Um, you know, on Shivaratri or, you know, the appearance day of Lord Shiva or, you know, something like that, we might offer some worship or puja to him because he's Vaishnavanam Yata Shambhu. So, like that. Anyway, it's a little bit. Okay, thank you very much. Are we going to read another one? No, it's too late now, huh? No. Well, see you next time. (laughs) Sorry about that. Looks like I clogged up the conversation. So we didn't get very far. And some of you are like, we tune in to hear the Bhagavatam. But all you hear is me. Nari. Huh? Nari. No. Mattering. It's all right. Everyone likes it. I think. <coughs> <coughs> okay. Thank you all very much. Grantarashri Ma Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Nitai Go Premanandi. Hey, well.